What it do, YouTube? It's your boy, Mike from NYC, and we back with another reaction today. We are watching Michael Jordan and Steph Curry talk Ryder Cup and golf, or Ryder Cup, golf, basketball. Um, I was going to watch Steph Curry see this season highlights, because this season he was really in his bag in a way that I could appreciate, like a James Harden has been in his bag and a Dame Lillard has been in his bag just trying to carry. And then I type in Steph Curry and I see Steph Curry, MJ, Steph Curry, MJ. So I'm like, what is this? And then it's the, you know, him and MJ talking. So I'm going to watch the one on his channel. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I guess shout out to Steph. Like, I mean, not that he needs it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, shout out to Steph for being one of the greatest players of this generation. You feel me? But without any further ado, let's get into the video. Mike, appreciate you uh, sitting down with me. Uh, this is really an honor, one, because of who you are, but more than that, we're obviously here on a golf course, and it's a pretty uh, special bond in terms of the basketball players who, who love right. golf. Um, that, that group is growing by the year. There's a lot more people picking up the game, but you've been in it from for a long time. And yeah. I'm fascinated just to know you know, how that love for golf in general just started um, and how you balanced, uh, you know, golf and basketball while you were playing. Because I'm in that boat right now, and I feel like sometimes I'm playing too much golf, but sometimes I feel like I'm not playing enough. Well, that's the, easy, that's the easiest point. I mean, that's the easiest question I can answer is that, you know, when I was playing, it was snow on the ground in Chicago. It was no golf courses. It was nothing. If it was, things would have been a little bit different. But I, I, I kind of got into golf. Uh, mainly because from a competitive standpoint, to me, it is the hardest game to play. Absolutely. Uh, I can always respond to a, an opponent, a defensive guy, offensive guy, whatever, but in golf, it's like playing in a mirror. And you're battling yourself consistently to try to get perfection. Every, mm. putt, every putt. So basically what MJ, the interpretation that I got is, I could always outdo the next man. You feel me? The man standing in front of me on the basketball court was never a competition, especially individually. I mean, I give you 50, 60, you already know my body. You feel me? I'm MJ. You feel me? Like Stephen A would say, MJ. You feel me? But golf was a completely different beast because I was always trying to outdo myself. And in basketball, you never really got that type of mirror. Like, I just need to, like, in terms of basketball, it was like, I just need to do better. Than, I need to do better than you, right? And, you know, for MJ, apparently that was easy. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. But in golf, it's really about you doing But I've never played golf, but this is the interpretation that I'm getting. That's deep. That's deep, bro. That's deep. Let's keep it, let's keep pushing. For a competitive person like me, this is what keeps me sane, you know, Ooh. because when I walk away from the game of basketball, you know, that was enough to keep my competitive juices working. Absolutely. Now when I'm, I'm not, I don't have that game, this game, and it even drives me crazy then. Now I go fishing in between my golf. <laughs> uh -oh. Because I got to show patience in fishing that's going to be that's related relative to, to golf. Good morning. And Yo, bro, he, this man's insane, though. Like, he, this is why he's the GOAT, though. He has an insatiable competitive spirit. He always needs to be exercising that muscle, bruh, of just being competitive and just trying to do better than you were yesterday and just getting better, like, and being competitive, like, insatiable, bro. This is why he's the GOAT. Welcome to the first day of the 43rd Ryder Cup. I'm, I'm fascinated by this event because this is my first time here. And when you get here, you see the, the atmosphere, you see yeah. the, you know, the chants and the noise. And I'm wondering, what do you think from a team perspective, you know, when guys are individuals throughout the whole year, how does that permeate in golf? Because with us, we get rah-rah in, in the locker room. Sure. Like, how does that accountability, you think, work in that locker room when well, it's guys tough. are different journeys? It's tough. You know, I mean, uh -huh. I've had countless conversations with some of the players and if I can put it in the most simplest terms, is that you know you have to give up bits and pieces of who you are mm -hmm. for the benefit of the team, and that can be you know something so simple as either you know response, you know support, uh, spending time, having lunch, dinner. Either way, uh, I learned that later in my years because initially in basketball, I was so focused in my craft that that was matter. That's what matters the most. But 
to win, you have to give parts of yourself mm -hmm. to other people and, and look at people in a different manner and, and come to accept them. Ryder Cup is very similar in the same sense. I mean, yeah, you got Tiger Woods on your team. Okay, Tiger Woods can only win one point. Yeah, one point. <laughs> you know, and he may not even win. It depends on if you're playing alternate shot. Mm -hmm. So it's things that you have to, you know, factor in. Our best asset is on singles, you know, but we always seem to struggle in alternate shot and, two, and best ball. Uh, and that, I think, has been something that the European team has always been able to capitalize on. And for us, we should learn from that. Well, a fixture at Ryder Cups through the years. I first remember seeing Michael Jordan at his first Ryder Cup in Valderrama, Spain in 1997. These guys could go to any event they want in the world, oh, yeah. and they never miss the Ryder Cups. I know you've traveled to <clears throat> Europe and, and been on the road sure. venues. You've been in home venues. If you were on the Ryder Cup team, yeah. would you rather be playing on the on the road, you know, somewhere in Europe, playing against that road crowd, being able to shut them up, or would you rather be on home turf, you know, hyping, feeling the energy here with the uh, with the home? You know the answer to that. I know. I just want to hear. It. Just I think he's gonna say on the road because Mike just Mike just a little crazy like that. He feed, I think he feed off he feed off the negative more than the positive. Even you can see that even when he played. You know, somebody was hyping like, yo, Mike, you the best. Ah, ah, ah. Like, that's not really getting going. But like, yo, Mike, I'm going to lock you up. <laughs> you going to do what? <laughs> you going to say that again. Like, I, I already know. You feel me? There's no way. I'd rather be on the road. <laughs> I'd rather be on the road. Yeah, I love playing on the road. He feed off that negative. It seems as though your concentration level is much, much better. Mm. Uh, you know that you're not expected to win. So that you can have the opportunity to, to prove the unknown. Uh, and a lot of times when you play at home, you let your hair down, you get relaxed, you see more fan friends, you see more family, you gotta worry about tickets, you gotta worry about so many other different things. So uh, we, I always love playing on the road so it minimizes my thought process and I can focus on my craft. And I, I would imagine if I was playing on the Ryder Cup, that's exactly, I would much rather play in Europe than to play at home. And there's another one for Dustin Johnson. Jordan on board. You've got a lot of different characters on the USA team. Do you see yourself in any of uh, the, uh, the Team USA members? Who do you see yourself in the most in terms of their demeanor on the course or wow, that's something hard. about them? That's, that's I know. so hard. Um, you could say nobody because they ain't on your level yet. <laughs> exactly. I, 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 you feel me? That's what I was thinking. Like, MJ? I'm, I'm going to start saying it like Stephen Smith. Stephen A. MJ, but yeah, I don't think anybody really mentally is like, and in a good way though, like, I don't think it's really healthy to be like Mike. Like, there's a reason, like, there's a reason, like, not, cause sure, was he athletically superior by a wide margin? Absolutely, but what really set him apart, what, what really made him to go is, his mind bro it all starts in the mind like you have to be like in order to do what he did at the level that he did it bro the level of dedication and the the, the level of discipline and, and borderline psychotic m mental state is at a high level bro so you know what i'm saying for good and bad reasons i would say nobody i think you know <laughs> i like to say that you know competitive nature is 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 you can see it on a lot of the guys, and it comes in a lot of different ways. He don't want to you know, shit on niggas, though. I can see a little though. bit of myself in JT. Mm -hmm. I can see a little bit of myself in Brooks. I can see a little bit of my calmness and, and confidence in DJ. So, I mean, I can see a lot of those qualities. Oh, he's talking about the golf. Basketball, okay. especially in, in, in the way that you play the game, you could impact the game on both ends of the floor. And you always, I'm sure you always felt like there was time for you to, to flip the switch and, and get things back under control. Sure. In golf, you can't really control what the other person's doing. How do you think that mentality is, mm. is, uh, is mastered in golf? Um, mm. think that is that is interesting because in basketball, if somebody's scoring too much, you can't really do. Or in basketball, if somebody's scoring too much, you could be like, "Yo, coach, put me on them." You feel me? Like I have hands in all parts. In golf, you only have control in what you're doing. And I think it, in in terms of the the microcosms that that are in both, I think that's so interesting that what you can take from both and being able to just relate it in different parts of your life, you know. Um, so yeah, I think that's really cool.
when I talk to all of my buddies, you know, when they're playing the big matches and I see that they're leading, you know, the I, the first thing I, I, I type to them or I text them is keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Because now you're not trying to overdo, overthink, you know, just keep it sim simple. Fairways and greens, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can't get it all back in one hole. You got to take it shot at a time. To me, those are simple conversations. That's a simple way to stop what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. I know it's a Ryder Cup. I know there's a bunch of people watching. I'm down five and mm -hmm. after five. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep it simple. Let's hit fairways and greens now. That's all you can do. You know, you can't just turn the switch and say, you know what, you race to five, let's start all over again. Right. No, you gotta channel your thoughts to start basically working your way back to getting more conf confident about your swing, scoring, or even the match. Now, it may not happen that way, but right. I think that's a good start. That's yeah, the best approach you can do. I've been to uh, a couple PGA events, I've been to one major, this is my first Ryder Cup. This is the first time that I've been on a course watching and haven't gotten the itch to go play. And I say that because the competition is so ripe. Yeah. Usually when I go to a tournament, I'm like, dang, like the shots are inspiring me to I want to go to the range right now sure. and work on this sure. and that. Uh, you feel like a similar vibe? Is that competitive nature still like I, I want to? I stay in my lane. <laughs> I stay in my lane. I, I watch these guys are good. Yeah, they're great. And to watch them under the pressure yeah. of being able to hit shot after shot after shot, knowing that you got so many thousands of people against you, and you have so many thousands of people supporting you, you don't want to let them down. Being able to represent that fan base, you know, USA or Europe, and for me, I don't have the skill set to put myself in that environment. Now, if you tell me I got a basketball in my hand, now that's a different mm -hmm. story. Exactly. If I, if I had a golf club in my hand, there's no way I can get comfortable to hit a 50-yard shot or a 100-yard shot. Not with all these people. Not all these people. It's got President Bush, Michael Jordan. But you know what's right. funny, though? I think it's interesting that he says that, you know, because you would think Michael Jordan, like, got ice in his veins, you know? And it's like, it's so... I, I really want to drive this home. Like you would think, like Michael Jordan isn't scared or nothing or not, or something like that. But I think that him showing that he's only confident in the things that he's has deep practice in shows it's not really about it's not as much about the mental as it is, or it's not as much about the individual and their makeup as it is about the reps you put in. I feel like the reason Kobe was the way Kobe was is because nobody was putting in more reps than Kobe. When you put in more reps than everybody, you're not scared because you have so much practice, you have so much confidence and conviction in the work that you put in, it, it alleviates some of that fear. My coach used to say, the way you get confidence is in practice. The way you get rid of being scared and fearful and, and afraid and shook is by practice is and that's the way you build confidence so when you're working harder than any when you know that you're working harder than anybody else it's hard not to be confident because like yo i prepared for this moment i prepared for this moment i've done my due diligence in this moment you feel me so i think that's super interesting to hear because some it, it some people think like you either have it or you don't or things like that and i don't really feel like that's true i feel like the more practice you put in the the more confidence you have that's why the best players take the shots at the end of the game because when the pressure's at the highest when some people aren't as confident because they haven't put in as much work the players who are the best on the team usually take those shots or make the decisions because they put in the most work you feel me so put in put in put in deep practice you'll get confidence in it you feel me Lord. It's got a big moment here to try to turn this thing around. Small lessons. Who small the lessons. Team would you be most my fault, my fault. I talked over him a little bit. Hundred yard shot. Not with all these people. Not these people. It's got President Bush, Michael Jordan over his right shoulder. It's, it's got a big moment here to try to turn this thing around. Who on the European team would you be most scared to play against? And I hate using that word with you. I'm not scared of anybody. I mean, but uh, Ian Poulter. He is a every time I, I try to, you know, I used to go and watch him all the time. If I'm in any of his matches or walking down, he finds me after he makes a good putt, and it's like, man, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I like him. I, so I, support you. I stay away from Yo. him. Yo, when he's walking, when I'm walking, I'm just watching, bro.
<laughs> That's hilarious. Like the miracle of Madonna, right? <laughs> I didn't spark it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I, 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 I had my own thoughts about it, but yeah. I didn't spark it. <laughs> Those are uh, maniacal eyes. Word. And we went from definitely winning the Medina to crying, driving home, that we just got our butts kicked. And that is, that's, that's Ian Poulter. There's always that debate on uh, whether you you hate losing more than you love winning, right? And I feel like, for me, losing just is the worst feeling in, in, in life at anything, whether mm. it's cars, golf, basketball, mm. whatever it is. Um, yeah, how do you feel about that and also like, how do you think that translates in terms of a team competition in golf that these guys are going through? I hate losing. <laughs> I mean, it's not even a question. But I, I mean, I have to respect losing because losing is a part of winning. Yeah. You, know, you never <laughs> can, you know, win. You got to lose to win. Mm. And I think the one thing about you know the, the Ryder Cup situation is that we got to want it bad enough. It, we, we were dominant early on. And now that they are, does it mean as much to us as it does to them? Absolutely. And if that's the case, then losing is going to hurt. Absolutely. You know, to a point where you would look at, how can I do things different? How can I change? How can I make this team better? And that's, that's the thing about a team, and you know this too, is that before you can look at someone else, you got to look at yourself in the mirror because that's nice. how things get started. And you got to be willing to change. And you got to have a sense of pride about yourself. It's not about the money. It's not about anything. It's more about the pride. And, you know, the best players, whoever's playing the best is going to win. What's the most amount of holes you played in one day? 50-ish. What? 63? Okay, close. I was close. I was rolling. 63. I was younger. I'm going to try to beat that one. That's, good luck. That's big. Yeah, good luck to me. Out of all the players here this week on Team USA or Europe, whose game would you want to have the most? John Rock. I Quick swing. Doesn't waste time. That's just, that's a pure simple motion. swing. And he's playing really good right now. That's a keep it simple swing right there. Who's the most fun basketball player you play with on the course, or one that you like to beat the most? Danny Ainge. He's my new favorite. I like that too. <laughs> my new favorite too. Wait, what? I ain't understand. There's no way I understood the question, bro. Most fun basketball player you play with on the course, or one that you like to beat the most? The most fun basketball player you played on the court. Somebody said Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge. Maybe there's something I don't want. Maybe this I missed something. Maybe there's like an inside thing I missed. But like. New favorite. I like that too. New <laughs> favorite too. <laughs> talks a lot of trash, do he? Yes, he talks he does. A lot. Oh, okay, okay. Now imagine on the basketball court. I had to Absolutely. deal with him there too. Yeah, I'll just stick with him out here. <laughs> uh, and last thing, what's your favorite thing just about the Ryder Cup? I, once again, the, the camaraderie, mm -hmm. uh, the patriotism. Mm. You know, you're representing your country, the chills I feel, and know that everybody's vying to try to win that cup. It's not about the money, it's not about anything, it's more about the pride. And, you know, the best players, whoever's playing the best is gonna win. You know, I hate that we've been playing bad, that they won, but I got a good feeling this year. Let's I got a it. good feeling. Let's do it, I appreciate you sitting down. I know how much golf means to both of us, and it's nice to connect on that level. Um, Anytime. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna bring my wallet next time we play. Come on down to the Grove. I got Absolutely. some treatment for you. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's That was dope. Um, definitely a great video. Definitely let me know what you guys think. I'll probably add to the Curry highlights tomorrow just because Curry is probably, if like I said before, if I could, if I could play like somebody in the league, it would be Steph Curry. Just somebody that, you know, keeps you on high alert 24-7. Like, I don't think anybody keeps you on high alert 20, like the way that Curry does on a consistent basis. Like, if you miss, if you not paying attention to him for one second, with or without the ball, it's like panic. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of energy that I want to instill in people that I play. Uh, but in terms of this video, I think it was a, it was a really good video. It, it was interesting to see his mindset t towards basketball versus towards golf. And what, you know, a lot of people think that um, things are like instilled in certain people's DNA, but it's not really that. I think it's just like, it's just the approach you take to things. You know what I mean? Um, I think in some cases he is like innately uh, diabolical in some ways and the his mindset towards winning. Uh, but in other ways, it, it, it was pretty humanizing and it, it, and it was humbling. Or it seemed humbling because it made, you know, when you... 
when you say, you know, when I'm playing basketball, boy, oh boy, if I have basketball in my hands, I have all the confidence in the world, but if I have a golf club, I don't have that same energy. It's very humbling because it, it gives a lot of the credit to the, to the work, right? So let's say I blow up on YouTube, I get a million subs subscribers and I work my ass off. I mean, work, 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 work. I'm working my ass off. Let's say I get a million subs, right? I understand why people say it's humbling because it, it allows you to see and take a step back and understand like, yo, it's not, it's not you really. Like it's the work you did. It's, it's not anything that you were born with. It's not, you know, I mean, sure. Some people may be charismatic and the, and you know, maybe that's a, it's probably a smaller percentage of it, but a, a large percentage percentage of it is the work and the time and the effort in the energy that you put into a thing you know so once you understand that is very humbling like yo bruh all the work i took to gain this like you know what i'm saying i understand if i make wrong moves i could lose it because i'm not that nice like that I, it's the work that i did you know so definitely interesting video definitely like comment share and subscribe if you like these type of videos and i see you want to see you peace peace